The Party Guests Charlotte and Edward exited their sedan into the crisp autumn air and onto a small lane in Belgravia, London. They were on their way to a lavish dinner party hosted by the well-heeled philanthropists, the Beaumonts. They were attending as guests of their newly acquainted friends, the Fitzgeralds, who were longtime friends of the Beaumonts. As they approached the doorsteps, Charlotte couldn't help but feel a sense of unease wash over her. There was something uncomfortably insistent about the manner in which the Fitzgeralds extended the invitation and their insistence on Charlotte making the acquaintance of Mr. Beaumont. Upon arriving at the Beaumont's elegant townhouse, they were greeted warmly by their friends, Mr. and Mrs. Fitzgerald. The room was filled with the upper echelon of London society, all dressed in their fashionable attire, sipping champagne and nibbling on canapes. Charlotte caught the eye of Mr. Beaumont, a tall, imposing figure with a piercing gaze. She couldn't help but feel a sense of discomfort in his presence, as though he was studying her every move. As the evening progressed, Charlotte couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The guests were whispering in hushed tones, their eyes darting around the room. Charlotte couldn't quite put her finger on it. She mentioned it to Edward, but he dismissed her concerns, telling her it was just her nerves, and handed her another drink. The conversation seemed to revolve around strange topics such as the occult and ancient rituals. She noticed that many of the guests had a strange symbol etched into their jewelry, a symbol she had never seen before. Despite her unease, Charlotte brushed it off as paranoia and continued to socialize with her fellow elites. As the night wore on, and as the Fitzgeralds kept presenting Charlotte drink after drink, she found herself feeling increasingly dizzy and disoriented. She soon stumbled into the powder room, hoping to compose herself. As she looked into the mirror, she noticed a small mark on her wrist, one that hadn't been there before. She studied it closer. It was a small circular symbol that resembled the one on the jewelry of the other guests. Charlotte's heart raced as she realized that she had somehow been marked. Charlotte darted into the hallway, screaming for Edward. She was frantic and not responsive to Edward's consolations. She remembered little else before waking up in their bed the next morning. It was as if the whole soiree was a dream. Honey, the party last night, Charlotte began, craning her neck towards Edward, who was walking toward the bathroom. Darling, I need to hurry. I have a business meeting with the Fitzgeralds this morning, and then a flight to Paris to meet those antique dealers, don't you remember? Edward interjected. He hastily went about the morning before leaving Charlotte alone and still confused about the events that transpired the night prior. The following days were a blur for Charlotte. She struggled to remember what had happened after she discovered the symbol on her wrist but she knew that something was terribly wrong. She began to experience vivid nightmares, dreams of strange creatures, and a blurry figure sexually assaulting her. She tried to confide in her husband, but he brushed off her concerns as mere stress from their busy social schedule. A couple weeks later, Charlotte received an invitation from the Beaumonts, inviting her and Edward to a private dinner party at their Hampstead country estate. Despite her reservations, Charlotte felt compelled to accept the invitation. Upon arriving at the estate, Charlotte and Edward were greeted again by Mr. and Mrs. Fitzgerald. Oh, what a surprise to see you both, remarked Charlotte. The Fitzgeralds led her and Edward to a grand study filled with strange symbols and esoteric artifacts. The doors promptly closed behind them. Charlotte felt a sense of dread wash over her, feeling somehow trapped. She reached for Edward's hand, and to her horror, she noticed the same strange circular symbol on his wrist. As Charlotte's eyes grew wider and her jaw began to drop, her husband grabbed her hand and said in a firm, decisive tone, You'll be okay, darling. You just need to listen to these fine people. Charlotte began to feel increasingly sick. 
The door opened and others entered. They were the party guests from the other week. They entered in orderly fashion and in unison said, You're now with us, Charlotte. She watched in horror as the other guests began to transform their bodies, contorting and twisting into grotesque shapes. She realized too late that the invitation had been a trap, a ploy to bring her into the clutches of a dark cult that had been lurking in London society. The congregation assured her she wouldn't be harmed, but rather very well cared for for the next eight or so months. You will not be allowed to leave the estate during your pregnancy, said Mr. Fitzgerald. Charlotte was confused and horrified, nearly ready to faint. She was led to a settee nearby. The guests spent the next hour explaining to her that she had been chosen to bear the child of Mr. Beaumont, and the seed was planted that night of the party. And though that child might seem a demon to you, he will soon be our new lord and master, said Mrs. Fitzgerald. All Charlotte could do was scream, No, no, she cried to no avail. Edward came to her side and whispered, We thank you, my darling. We 